Hey everybody, Carl from All Balls No Bull Baseball and AllBallsNoBull.com. Today I'm here with my very good friend Mike Morris. Mike's facility is The Grind in Orange, uh, Connecticut. And uh, Mike, you played for, uh, if I remember correctly, University of New Haven? Yes. You were All-American, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And, and you were ultimately drafted by the Mets? Yep, drafted by the New York Mets uh, in the 20th round of the 2008 draft. Was that your senior year? My senior year. Wow, absolutely. okay. Can you tell me what you, what you felt when you knew you'd been drafted? What was that feeling like? Uh, it was the greatest feeling in the world. I was sitting at home and uh, they had told me I was going to go from anywhere from 12 to 15. And when my name wasn't called from 12 to 15, I said, oh man, what's going to happen now? You know, are they even going to take me at all? Uh, and then I, we were watching it on the computer and, and listening to you know each pick go. Um, and that was back when you had the, the next tell, the walkie-talkies we sure. had. And a few of my buddies were watching it at their house, and uh, my computer actually froze. <laughs> and I hear them screaming into the phone, uh, saying pick number, you know, whatever it was, and uh, you know, 20th round by the New York Mets. And you know, I was at home with my family and uh, my fiance now, Dana, and we, uh, you know, we're all just ecstatic, and it's you know, it's a great opportunity. Well, it's uh. You know, it's it, it's just a full, it's a fulfillment of a dream, Absolutely. and it's the start of another dream. And uh, it is what would be the correct word? It's it, it's just verification of all the the work you've done and and, and all that. Yeah, no question about it. I mean, uh, I've, I own a baseball facility now called the Grind, um, and, I, and I named it the Grind for a reason. You know, because to get to becoming a minor league baseball player, it was hard, it was tough, it was blood, it was sweat, it was tears, and uh, it wasn't easy. Um, so when I was eventually done playing ball, um, I knew that opening a facility was something that I would want to want to do. Um, and when I made the decision that, that um, that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life, that was, that was what, what are we gonna call the place? And we went through every name in the book, and um, I was just, Standing in my room one day, and I said, "The grind, the grind. You know, you got, you got this game. You got to grind it out. You know, it's bus trips in the minor leagues. It's, it's eating garbage food. You know, on, on three-hour, four-hour bus trips in the Appalachian Mountains that, that aren't fun. You know, and you're by yourself, and you know, long days out of the field. You know, you don't just show up for a seven o'clock game at five o'clock. You get to the ballpark yeah, can at twelve thirty. Can I, you know, first off, to be honest with you, this isn't for everybody." Right. Sure this is not for everybody. When kid when kids come in and tell me they want to play college baseball, the very first thing I always respond to them is, "You do know you're talking about a five hour a day commitment." Absolutely. And and also, uh, I I think that that's the reality of playing at the next level, whether that be college or professional. And the 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 other uh, the other thing is 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 to show just how difficult this game is, even for the, the kids in, in the minor leagues, especially for the parents and for the coaches, is to acknowledge how difficult this, this game is. It's a failure game. And I'd like you to talk a little bit about that, about uh, I think that people can start to grasp the idea of, of the workouts and everything, but what was it like mentally? Um, early on in the minor leagues, my first year, year and a half, Two years, I had some success. Um, swung the bat pretty well, uh, caught pretty well. Um, and in 2010, I started feeling it. You know, I was uh, I was kind of getting bounced around all over the place. I'd, I'd gone up to Double A and back down to Low A and back up to Double A and then to High A. Um, and I was bouncing around all over the place. And I finally settled in in High A in the Florida State League. Um, and I was about one for. Forty something. Yes, never happened to me. <laughs> food, food didn't taste the same. Couldn't sleep. Couldn't eat. Right. You know, you just you didn't even feel like going to the ballpark because you know you're just beat up mentally. It's what the heck do I got to do to to get a hit to square a ball up? Uh, and you know, it, it takes a toll on, you, especially when you're somebody that's as passionate as, as I am about the game and, and you care that much and you've worked so hard to get this far. Um, and now you might not be getting the results, you know, because of, you know, there's, there's a number of variables of, you know, why you're not getting the results, whether it's, you know, in your swing or you're just, a, 
you're away from home, you're not with your family. Right. Um, you know, there's there's a number of things. Um, you know, you're questioning yourself: Do I belong here? Um, am I good enough to be here? Did um, you did you on that? Uh, what I what I what a big thing that I say to the kids is the the, the most important word in baseball is better. Yeah. Keep getting better. Now, did you find that that in that in those moments when you're one for 40, I had a stretch in, in, in one year I started it in college, I was 0 for 19. And you do, you start going, oh man, I, uh, I, I stink. And I, I learned that the, the trick was to believe in yourself and, and keep making adjustments and you do get over that, uh, yeah. that hump. Yeah, I mean eventually, uh, you know, you get over the hump and you know, you, you keep going to the cage and you keep making adjustments and you know, you try and stay tough mentally. And, and grind out every pinch, every at bat, and you know, just pick something up that, that can help you, or um, somebody that can help you. Um, what turned it around for me? Uh, it's different for everybody. Um, we were playing in Jupiter um, in the Florida State League. Uh, it was Father's Day. I'm walking out to the field, and you know, I had been struggling, struggling terribly. And I'm walking out to the field, and uh, I hear some guy in the stand say, "Hey, kid, keep your head up." And it was my father. And he had happened to fly down to Florida. And I didn't even know That's he was great. coming down. I didn't even know he was coming down. And he didn't even, I didn't even, I wasn't even playing that night. Um, after that game, we went out for dinner, we talked. Um, and just, you know, it was good to have somebody around that, you know, that's a friend uh, that you can trust. You know, somebody that, that's been with you your whole life. Um, and I, he, he left that next morning. You know, didn't even care if I was playing or, or, you know, got to see me play, um, just wanted to be there for me. So, um, you know, then after uh, after my dad had left and going back home, I had played the next night and got a few hits, and, you know, things kind of started picking up from there. Um, well, it all comes down to uh, believing in, in yourself. Absolutely. And whatever triggers that belief again. Yeah. One of the things I do when I'm uh, throwing – uh, it's so central to performance. I, uh, it's very easy to think of when, when you hit is I tell the kids, I go, look, you know, you have a bad swing and you, you know, whatever in a cage, what happens? You get another pitch. Yeah. And I think that the, the thing that makes baseball difficult is first off, it's an incredibly difficult game. Second of all, when you fail, you're isolated. The spotlight's on you. Everybody, everybody sees you, and you're and you're. It's, it's tough to not be embarrassed and, and everything else. And the third thing, and I think that this is actually the hardest thing, is that there is such a time gap then before your next, you know, performance where you where you can make make that up. And uh, I remember uh, reading an interview with Stan Musa one time. Where he said, "I didn't think about my batting average until the All Star break." And you have to take that, no matter what you do, it's, it's one pitch at a, at, at a time. This is one of those homilies that we all talk about, but, but you really have to put in practice. Is, uh, I don't care if you fail a thousand times, if the next one is, is, a, new, is a new start. Absolutely. The next one's going to be the one that picks you up, that, that changes things around. And uh, there's no question, you've got to, you know, you got to grind every pitch. you got to keep fighting. Now, at, your, at your facility, I what I find, and this is one of the things we're trying to attack in the in the website, uh, is that this message of how mental it is and how hard it is is just not even being spoken of. It's not out there at, at actually a lot of times at high school and, and, and below. And yet kids run into the wall at the next levels. Everybody aspires. A lot of people are making money by by that fantasy of uh, play college, play p professional, and nobody's translating that message, which to me is the most important message of how mental it is, how hard it is, the work in involved. Now, what do you do at your facility to get that uh, that message across to the kids? Um, we have we have a little bit of a, a different mentality uh, at our facility than, than I would say most, um, and a different atmosphere. We try to create a, a, a college-like atmosphere. Uh, because a lot of the guys here are, are, you know, guys that can relate to college atmosphere in the last few years, um, pro ball atmosphere in the last few years, um, and we, we take an old school approach. You know, we uh, I, I came from Coach Vieira, who was a you know an old school guy, tough guy. You know, we, we just try and uh, preach to these kids that this game is one, it's built on failure, 
You're not going to always succeed. You're not going to be always. You're not always going to be the best. And there's going to be a thousand other little Mikey somewhere else out of the, out of the world. Um, so you got to work just as hard every day as as somebody down in Florida or somebody in the Dominican Republic because they're working and grinding every day. Um, so you know we just constantly remind them that it's a it's an ongoing battle physically, mentally, and um, that you have to be willing to accept that challenge. Of, do you know who Rick Wolf is by chance? I do. I, I, I know Rick and I went to a uh, seminar that he was, uh, hadn't seen it for a couple of years, went to, uh, and for those of you who don't know, uh, uh, Rick uh, has written a, uh, several books, his son, and Rick played minor league ball. And Rick is a, a spokesman for a lot of, the, very nice man, a uh, very intelligent uh, man, a spokesman for this. He has a uh, syndicated radio. Uh, show and, and he was doing a symposium whether it was and I went up and, and talked to, to him and in that symposium he brought up the point that uh, despite what is out there in the marketplace it's not just talent and to some degree it's not even hard work it's the passion he said elite athletes have 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 some modicum of talent but what really and this is what's great about baseball more than anything else more than any other sport, it's at some point, I'm too small to play big time football or basketball, so are you. But the passion is what translates uh, yeah. to uh, to the success. And, yeah. and and that's what you're looking for, is to tell the kids what that is. Yeah, and we, and we, t and we tell kids flat out when they walk through that door, if you don't want to work at this game and get better and, and put in the effort, come to us once, twice a week is great. We'll give you all the information in the world, we'll help you get better. But if you don't want to go home and work on it, and do the drills, and get in front of the mirror, run those hill sprints, or whatever it may be to get you to the next level, we don't want you. We don't want to just take mom and dad's money, because that's not what we're about. We're about getting you to go to college. Our job here is to get you to go play college baseball. Not to go play pro ball. You go play college baseball, and if your aspirations are going to play pro ball, then whatever you do in college, that will help well, college baseball is such a it's a such an incredible experience. Uh, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity, and uh, the life lessons you learn and, and everything from there are, are just uh, are just phenomenal. Now I want to end on on one thing we're going to do as a feature of, uh, of of this. Having been in this for so long, there's a million funny stories. Uh, I we're going to interview Pete. Uh, you and I both know Pete Tucci. I remember Pete told me that he, as a joke one time, he shaved off half his beard. <laughs> so here's a guy with a full beard like this when he was when he was in a slump. Yeah. And the next day he goes four for four, so for like a week he looks like an idiot <laughs> playing with half a beard. And he gets a he gets a double against the second baseman, you know, looks at him like he's yeah. but uh, do you have a funny story from minor league uh, ball, uh, something that was uh, humorous that happened or that you participated in? Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's a number of them. I don't know how many are appropriate for the camera, but one, <laughs> one was I was a I was the type of kid. Um, you know, my mother always was a great cook, always made dinner uh, at home. Um, you know, we always had nice meals, and uh, I remember we were playing in uh, Pulaski, West Virginia, and uh, it was one of our one of my first. It was my first road trip in the minor leagues, um, and I remember, you know taking a shower after the game, packing up my bag and looking around and saying, well, you know, what the hell are we going to eat? I'm starving. Um, you know, just caught nine innings and I'm saying, you know, what do we need? I'm looking around the clubhouse, there's nothing to eat. I'm saying, we got to take a four hour bus ride back to Kingsport, Tennessee and I can't eat, I'm eat anything. So I remember getting on the bus and in the front seat there, there was about 12 boxes of Little Caesars pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and as you walked on the bus, the trainer just handed you a box. <laughs> and I took my box, and I sat down in my seat, and I'm looking at it, I opened it up, and there's about three pieces of pizza, because for some reason in Pulaski, West Virginia, I don't know whether they didn't know how to count or they just messed up <laughs> the pizza, and it was all smushed all over the side of the box. And that was my meal. And I sat down and I said, welcome to the minor leagues. Exactly. exactly. So, uh, yeah, that was my first uh, road trip experience with uh, eating 
on the road. You see, it's not all big bucks and the glamour and hot girls waiting for you outside the locker room <laughs> and all that stuff. So no, that's for all, sure. All that stuff. So, well, thank you. You know, thank you, uh, Mike and I are, are, are good friends. We do a lot of stuff together, so it's a pleasure. And we're going to have him do some stuff with uh, some catch. He was a all American catcher. We're going to do some catching drills and stuff with us as, uh, as well. So, thanks for looking in. Thank <laughs> you.